Welcome to this episode of MoGuard TV. I'm Sergeant Jacqueline Courtney with the 70th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment. In this episode, we'll take a look at some of the programs that the Guard offers to develop the leadership and resiliency skills of their soldiers and airmen. We'll also learn about the importance of honoring our military history and units returning home from deployment. Our first story is about an officer training program at Missouri Southern State University and their participation in a week-long event of honoring veterans. Missouri Southern State University is one of only two universities in Missouri that has the Show Me Gold program, an officer candidate training pipeline for the Missouri National Guard. So currently the two options available for anyone interested in joining the Show Me Gold program is here at Missouri Southern in Joplin and Southeast Missouri in Cape Girardeau. The Missouri Show Me Gold program was modeled after a similar program in Oklahoma. A few years back, the Oklahoma National Guard had the original concept of an officer development program focused on National Guard officers. Beforehand, it wasn't something that uh, really existed. The National Guard relied a lot on uh, ROTC programs, military high schools and prep colleges to develop and train officers and assess officers into the National Guard. A couple of years ago, our chief of staff and the recruiting commander uh, went to Oklahoma, did a site visit, and it decided that this was a program that they wanted to pursue. Currently, there are 35 students enrolled in the Show Me Gold program at Missouri Southern. To be in the uh, Show Me Gold program, the candidates or recruits have to meet all the basic enlistment requirements of the Missouri National Guard. Beyond that, they do attend basic training in AIT and then go a little further in order to be into our program. They have to pass a commissioning physical, they have to be able to get a security clearance. When I decided to move to Missouri, I decided on Missouri Southern State University largely because of the program they offered. The Show Me Gold program was very uh, attractive to me. I chose Missouri Southern strictly because of the Gold program and I was able to come here because I wanted to do nursing and they have a good nursing program as well. The Show Me Gold program hosts Veterans Week each year to promote their presence at Missouri Southern and as a form of community outreach. Left face, present arms. This year's festivities included a Veterans Day ceremony, a 5K run, a CrossFit competition, and a military appreciation football game between Missouri Southern and Missouri Western State. The goal of Veterans Week is one, to raise awareness of the fact that Missouri Southern is designated as a veterans friendly campus and then two raise awareness of the programs available to veterans here on campus one being the student veterans organization which partners closely with the show me gold program throughout the week and then the show me gold program what we do that we're here and hopefully reaching out and bringing in some recruits through the week we're preparing them to be the best leaders that they can be we've given them a solid foundation of the core principles of leadership and they understand that responsibility and that they're, they're ethical and sound leaders from day one. Many of the events such as the 5K, the veterans ceremony, the multiple color guards we do throughout the week, as well as the CrossFit competition and the military appreciation game, they all drive awareness about Veterans Week, about the Student Veterans Organization, uh, about the Show Me Gold program, and ultimately about um, what it is Missouri Southern's doing to give back to the veterans community. I think the importance of the events such as the CrossFit, uh, the 5K, and then the Color Guard definitely revolves around presence in our community, making sure that the people here in Joplin know that we are active in the community and want to involve everybody. Freshman candidate Shelby Andrus proved just how tough she can be by finishing in second place in the CrossFit competition. I'm very passionate about physical activity. I think it's very important, especially as a female in the National Guard, you have to keep up with the males in the National Guard. So that's what I'm doing my best to do. I love to be healthy and 
physically fit. Something I had the pleasure of doing throughout multiple phases uh, of this week and the different events was just getting face-to-face -face with veterans that were on and off campus. Community members coming in, veterans from around the community coming out on campus to take part in different events, or just the multiple veterans that serve in some capacity within Missouri Southern. The opportunity for veterans to get together, share stories, ultimately is irreplaceable. That brotherhood in arms that we have is really a big part of the week, and that's as key to the week as it is about getting the awareness out to the community. Next, we'll meet a retired guardsman who was awarded for going above and beyond her duties as she served in Iraq. Stephanie Leonard has had a number of different careers in her lifetime. If you were to visit Mount Olive United Methodist Church in DeSoto, Missouri on any given Sunday, you may not know that the woman preaching from the pulpit wasn't always a pastor. At one time, she had a successful career in advertising, as well as a career in IT. But you may be more surprised to learn that she is a decorated Missouri National Guardsman who served in Iraq. Stephanie was working in the advertising industry in the late 1980s as a media buyer when she decided to serve her country and state as a member of the Missouri National Guard. I actually felt that there was more to life than what I was doing. I wanted a real challenge from life, and I felt the National Guard would help me sharpen skills I already had and give me a whole new skill set. At the beginning of the war in Iraq, Chief Leonard was working as a public affairs specialist. The Army was looking for units to document the history of the Iraq war and specifically record what was happening on the ground. The Army tasked the 135th Military History Detachment of the Missouri National Guard to provide the qualified personnel. We knew that the realization is that the order would come from the center of military history for us, and that's exactly what happened. We were on their short list to be deployed to Iraq. Our mission was to cover the history, military history as it was happening. And at that time, it was something that was really outside the box. Chief Leonard's unit was assigned to cover the 3rd Corps Support Battalion. They were in charge of everything that moved in and out of Iraq at the time. That was our mission, to go everywhere they were, to tell their story, essentially. Chief Leonard was in Nasiriyah, Iraq on March 23, 2003, interviewing the commander of the 507th when they were ambushed. As I was speaking to him, very late at night, because it was a very difficult interview to get, we started to get shelled. Things are starting to draw a little bit closer and closer. I very politely say to him, sir, may we please move off of the flight line because of all the shelling. The ambush was the start of a seven-day battle that resulted in the loss of 11 U.S. Marine lives. After her time in Iraq came to a close, Chief Leonard was surprised to hear that she was going to be awarded the Bronze Star. The Bronze Star was awarded to me for meritorious service. I was raised to be a humble soul, not to really put myself before others. Chief Leonard was the first woman in the Missouri National Guard to receive the Bronze Star. I was really shocked um, that I got it, but it was honestly for doing, doing the absolute best job that I could. Because she had been embedded with the 3rd Corps Support Battalion, Chief Leonard saw a need for a safer and more efficient way of using transportation assets for moving equipment and personnel out of Iraq and back into Kuwait. There were a lot of assets moving in and out of country that were empty. And I said, why can't we have these transportation assets simply help us refrad, move back to Kuwait, uh, rather than waiting on another transportation company who can serve another mission elsewhere? She presented the idea to her commanding officer. And I said, you know, sir, I, I know we're not going to be in this country forever. And I have been giving a lot of thought to how we are going to echelon ourselves and our equipment back into country. I really didn't see a safe way for us to do that as a cohesive unit. So rather than do that as a cohesive unit, I broke us up into smaller bits and pieces and sent the personnel back first, the equipment next, and myself last. 
The sweetness of it all is that the National Guard unit from Ohio, a transportation unit, were the ones who actually moved all of our equipment back to Kuwait for us. Chief Leonard has always had a love for history, and specifically, Missouri's military history. Those of us who ignore our history are destined to repeat it in some form or fashion. She enjoys researching about Missouri's role in the Civil War and the many battles that took place in the Show Me State. There is much to learn from our history, from our military history, from our state's history. It is very rich. I look at history as ordinary people doing extraordinary things during some unsettling and or extraordinary times. Chief Leonard describes her contributions in Iraq with the tone of a humble soul ordinary person during extraordinary times trying to do something just to get herself and her unit down the road. For over 375 years, our nation's citizen soldiers have sacrificed, struggled, and triumphed at home and abroad. Through resolve, resilience, and readiness, our Army National Guard continues its proud legacy. As citizen soldiers, we are your next door neighbors. We're your colleagues in schools, offices, and factories. In every corner of America, the Army National Guard is nearby. The Army National Guard. You'll like this next package about the brand new Museum of Military History in Jefferson City. On Sunday, December 7th, 2014, the Missouri National Guard opened the new Museum of Military History in Jefferson City. Well, today, thanks to a lot of hard work by a lot of dedicated folks, uh, soldiers, airmen, and civilians, that hidden gem that we had uh, up on the hill on Thomas Hall is being transformed now into a crown jewel that you see here today. With this new expanded museum, we have more space to tell more of the guard story. The new museum features over 6,400 square feet of exhibit space. Included in that space is a fully restored UH-1 Huey helicopter. Since the early 19th century, Missouri citizens, soldiers, and airmen have established a track record of success, serving in every major American conflict. They found the Jeep that's behind me. They found it at Camp Clark. In a, in a barn. As a matter of fact, the staff car, too, I think was from Clark. And they found them both in a barn. They were just covered with hay. Gail Szynski was thrilled to see a 1940s-era Willys Jeep in the museum. For her, it was like seeing an old friend. Her father and uncle had restored two of them when she was a teenager. I always felt like that people were jealous because there I drove around in a little army Jeep, and so it was a lot of fun to go and pick up kids and my friends, and we'd go drive around in it. If he was still here, I think he would find all of this fascinating to see this sitting here. The new museum was made possible by volunteers' passion for military history and their dedication to detail. I call labor love, <laughs> as silly as that may sound, but it is. You know, I love doing this. Charles loves doing this. Major Brown loves it. You know, we all do. We're not building a monument for those of us here today. We're building a monument for our children. Uh, General Danner's vision for this museum uh, has really taken shape, and I think uh, the public will be here, uh, come to see the museum, and get a real appreciation of the Missouri Army National Guard. I think this museum, one of the most important things that it could do is to do a partnership with local retired veterans so that they can come here and basically explain to the kids, instead of it just being a picture in a case, bring it to life, put a sight, a smell, a texture, just truly really bring it to life for them. Well, it gives them a sense that this is the real thing. This isn't uh, what you see at a theater or online or something. This, these are real people, these are real things. This really happened. Whether this is sitting in a museum or is sitting in a basement, it's the soldiers that bring it to life. So we owe it not only to the veterans of previous wars, but today's soldiers and airmen to preserve and display their history. The new museum is over seven times the size of the old museum and features some new technology that the old museum didn't have. It's a really good feeling to have a top-notch museum facility where we have proper space to showcase the artifacts to have the proper climate control. That's a very, very big issue with 
old artifacts. Our lighting in here is the proper lighting. It's LED lights. They do not emit UV rays or heat. So those are big issues you have to worry about. And that all helps with preserving the artifacts so people can continue to come and see these things over the many, many years. There has also been an influx of artifact donations surrounding all of the new publicity. People that have visited here today have offered more artifacts for the museum. Um, we've had people bring in some more things just this week where they have uh, saw the news releases and things on Facebook where they saw the museum and they would say, oh, would you like this piece, a photograph or, or whatever. And so we're always looking for things like that to help tell the story of Missouri's military history. It's been a long journey. We're ready to go. We're open and welcome the public. Now we'll take a look at the Enhanced Resiliency Training Program, the Guard's holistic approach to strengthening its members' health and readiness. The Missouri National Guard has taken a proactive approach to suicide prevention by inaugurating a new Enhanced Resiliency Training Program. Enhanced resiliency means that you will be able to stand back up and face whatever comes and overcome it. We looked at our demographic and said, well, this is how these issues are affecting our force. We have this little bit of money and a problem that every soldier and airman faces. What is one of the ways we can take that money, apply it where it's needed, and then multiply it throughout the force? The Family and Warrior Support Division was responsible for developing and implementing the new curriculum which included personal finance, employment transition, substance abuse, and positive psychology tools. Spend your money wisely. That new Xbox One came out, who's got one? All right, did you have to have it? My son had to have one. He had to have it, regardless. It was $500, but that's my $500, Dad. I was like, do you work? He said, no. He said, you work. So, <laughs> A key component of the program is the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People for Soldiers, which was developed from the best-selling self-help book by Stephen R. Covey. So we're going to bring the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People into us. We want highly effective soldiers. We want you to be a success in your civilian life as well as when you come to the military. I get the privilege of sharing uh, my life and my habits, and it doesn't matter what religious preference is on your dog tag, these seven habits work for any person, okay? It gives them the tools and the resources to be an effective soldier by placing these habits, one through seven, in their lives. The first habit is be proactive. Very simple, be proactive. Who can tell me what proactive means? A lot of these principles are very basic, but at the same time, they're very profound. You have the power to make the choice is you have been given that power, and I give you that power if, if somebody has told you you don't have that. You have the power to choose uh, your, your destination. You have the power to choose whether you want to be upset. You don't have the power to choose uh, certainly what circumstances come into your life, but you certainly do have the power to choose the way that you respond to them. It's not what happens. It's what happens to what happens. Lieutenant McConnell asked the class to reflect on their strengths and what they most value in life. Each soldier was then asked to write a personal mission statement. When we got to creating the mission statement, it was brilliant the things that soldiers would come up with. I want to finish college and own my own business someday. Helping other people in life is my passion. I want to be remembered as someone that makes sacrifices to the lives of others, to make others' lives better. The ability just to sit down and, and write something about what I want my life to become, what I want to strive towards. Um, just kind of really hit me, and I've taken away a lot of things. By far, that's the most important thing so far. Give my kids the life I had and much more. Listen to those who need me and give or find the advice they need. And always live life to the fullest, one day at a time. Do you believe that? I do. We didn't have all this back when I first came in, so I think it's an incredible program that they've got. Helping especially the younger soldiers to get a better start. But for the next five minutes, you'll come up to the board and you'll put a plus 
you'll put a plus and then something you want to do this next month in order to make sure that you can get better self-care. And then a minus for something you could do less of in order to get more self-care. And it'll go the same for finances and the same for relationships. Each class will meet for two days for three consecutive months. The last month's class focuses on family resilience and the soldiers' family members are invited to attend. It used to be, you know, the old line, if, if the Army wanted you to have a family, they would have issued you one. No way. We figured out that, no, the whole family deploys. We may recruit a soldier, but we retain the family. The training was also an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one counseling with the chaplaincy. We're available to you. If you want to sit down and dialogue about, hey, I kind of messed up over here. How do I get that back on track? We would much rather talk to you tonight about how to keep it great than when it's all blown apart and your chain of command is saying, man, you need to go see the chaplain. Each and every member that was here this weekend can serve in a vital role of representing the training that they were given and affect much more soldiers than we could touch in one weekend. And what I hope out of this is we'll get a second and third order of effects that is sharing that recipe for success and resilience. Look at what you guys said in your mission statements. Those were great. If you guys go out of here and live with purpose like that and you use your tools with the GI Bill and the military benefits and the veteran resources of family warrior support, there is no stopping you guys. You're gonna be leaders in your town, in your community. You're gonna be great people. We're gonna win. We will, we will not not win. But we don't always get that same kind of training and that same kind of emphasis in life. And we want citizen soldiers to be a success as a citizen as well as a soldier. As citizen soldiers, we are your next door neighbors. We're your colleagues in school, offices, and factories. In every corner of America, the Army National Guard is nearby. The Army National Guard. Mogar TV was there for the welcome home ceremony of the 220th Engineer Company as they returned home from their duties in Afghanistan. The people of Missouri are proud of your accomplishments and they welcome you home. Missouri National Guard families, friends, and supporters gathered to welcome the 220th Engineer Company back home. The soldiers have been gone since last March, but got to return just in time for the holiday season. One of the things I kept telling them is, is uh, you never measure deployment on uh, on what you gave, but what you were willing to give. And uh, and you know they gave everything they were asking, and, and were willing to give so much more. And, and uh, every one of them, so I was really proud of them. The 220th Engineer. Company is the final Missouri Guard unit to return from Afghanistan. They spent their time overseas deconstructing military bases. The, the size of it just really diminished as time went on. And, uh, you know, not everyone gets to do this, and it's something I will uh, always treasure. But for the 220th, being the last ones to leave also meant turning off the lights. The base, when you go onto it, starts with a, a lot of amenities like Internet Cafe, a PX, a chow hall. But by the time we get done, none of those things exist. So you're eating a, a meal out of a bag. And it showed. There's only one thing the guardsmen were almost as excited to see as their loved ones. So what do you think the first thing you guys are going to go do after this is? Go eat. Yeah? Are you? Honestly, just go back to the house and uh, we're going to order some emos. So I miss some St. Louis style pizza and we're just going to hang out with the family. One thing is certain for these Missouri guardsmen, there's no place like home for the holidays. We were holding it as a surprise for them and I just couldn't wait to talk to them. I was talking to this one the other day and I had to act like I was still in Afghanistan so I just could not wait to get home. Are you guys happy she's back? You can yeah. use... Excuse me? What you said? Yes. No, what you said? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma <laughs> I'm Sergeant Brittany Crocker. It is now my honor to introduce the Adjutant General, Major General Steve Danner. Thank you, Sergeant Courtney, and thank you, viewers, for watching this episode of MoGuard TV. Reflecting on one's history is essential to developing and maintaining an organization's values. The Missouri National Guard has a long, proud history of citizen soldiers serving their state and nation. In this episode, we've seen examples of how service members continue to add to the pages of our history 
by awarding the Bronze Star Medal to our first female recipient, by encouraging officer candidates to participate in Veterans Week, and by celebrating the safe return of one of our last units from Afghanistan. The opening of the new Museum of Missouri Military History has created a facility worthy of our rich history and will serve as a place to honor and study the legacy of the Missouri National Guard. By honoring and reflecting on our history, we strengthen our commitment to be willing to learn and to adapt to the ever-changing environment, both locally and globally. On behalf of Governor Jay Nixon and our 11,500 soldiers and airmen, we would like to invite you to visit our new museum at the Ike Skelton Training Site in Jefferson City. Thank you for your service and support.